Okay. According to my little uh, little indicator in the computer, the recording has started. Sorry if that was a little slow. Uh, I'm very excited tonight. Uh, thank you again, everybody, for uh, tuning in to the uh, the second of my live webinar interviews. If you recall, I, I had Dr. Hauser and, and Father Embelli on last time. Hopefully, this time, my skills as an interviewer uh, will improve somewhat. But I'm very, very excited to, tonight uh, because I have, uh, once again, my, co my former colleague, Dr. Rodney Hauser, professor of theology at DeSales University near Allentown, Pennsylvania. And, uh, and before I include our sort of guest of honor, uh, introduce our guest of honor, Rodney, the last time I introduced you, I did not mention your, uh, your book publication. So if you would quickly, uh, please uh, inform my audience uh, of your book publications. Well, I, you know, I, I have a couple of books. Well, I actually have two books on Balthazar, and then I have a book with you edited on, on Balthazar, right? So I have the uh, right. The original uh, book is uh, um, Hans Urs von Balthazar and Protestantism. Um, and then the uh, second one is uh, uh, Hans Urs von Balthazar, A Guide for the Perplexed. <clears throat> and then uh, you and I, of course, edited the uh, How Balthazar Changed My Mind book, which was uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. And, and sort of more recently, I've been dealing, uh, I've been doing a lot more, you know, sort of articles and, and things like that. And I feel like I, I had a stretch of sort of back to back to back to back, really, really demanding articles that stretched me way, way beyond my expertise. <laughs> but uh, yeah. but I'm glad I wrote them in hindsight because I learned a lot, whether anybody else learns anything from them. Or oh, not. that's but great. I'm go back to writing books one of these days, you know, we'll see. I think people tend to read articles more than they read books anyway. And I prefer to write articles than books myself. I actually can't stand writing writing books because I have the attention span of a flea. <laughs> I get bored. It really, seriously, I get bored uh, when I write a book. I get about halfway through it and I think, can't I read something else now? And I, I'm, re I'm ready to study something else now. Uh, so th there's a tediousness to it that taxes me. But anyway, uh, thank you for that. I, I neglected to introduce your full credentials in the last show. I was so focused on father and belly. But, the, but on my... Uh, my Main guest tonight uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, David C. Schindler, and uh, we're very pleased to have him here. I've known uh, Dr. Schindler for many, many years. I knew him when he was a wee pup, not that wee. I think you were in your 20s. Yeah, I, th I think you were in your 20s when I first met. I was in my 30s, and you were in your 20s. <laughs> yeah, weren't we all? And I had hair. I had. You still have hair, and I hate you for it. But uh, there you go. I actually have hair. It's just horrid looking, you know, and I, refu I refuse to be the comb over guy. Anyways, let me give you a brief uh, uh, biographical here. Uh, Dr. D David C. Schindler is professor of uh, metaphysics and anthropology at the Pontifical John Paul II Institute for Studies on Marriage and Family at Catholic University of America. He is a translator from French and German and editor of the North American edition of Communio and an author of many books, including Freedom from Reality, the Diabolical Character of Modern Liberty, and a Love and the Postmodern Predicament, Rediscovering the Real in Beauty, Goodness, and Truth. I would also add that, well, tonight we're going to be discussing this wonderful book that he just came out with, The Politics of the Real which I reviewed in Catholic World Report. Oh, I'm knocking into my microphone. There we go. I'm no Joe Rogan, I'll tell you that. And uh, here we go. But one of my favorite books, too, was one of his first ones, Hans Urs von Balthasar and the Dramatic Structure of Truth. I love this book, David. That's a great Thank book. You. Yeah. Was, was this your dissertation? It was. It was, yeah. Yeah, I kind of thought it was or your second dissertation or third or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually think, I think here is your best book. Plato's critique of impure reason. I've read this one twice, and I'm it, I'm really pleased to hear that, Larry. I, it's actually my my favorite too. It uh, well, first off, I love Plato, and second off, I like reading books that make me personally feel profoundly stupid. <laughs> and that that is one of them because when I read it, your genius just leaps out at every page. I never really felt like I understood Plato until I read your book, and I read Plato a lot. But anyway, we're here tonight to discuss uh, the politics of the real, the church between liberalism and integralism. And uh, I think it's a fantastic book. And I think it opens, I mean, we could obviously teach an entire semester's worth of, you know, just out of this book. So we can barely scratch the surface of getting into it tonight. And I'm sure we'll probably get off on a few tangents. But let me just begin 
Uh, what, what, why the title, The Politics of the Real, David? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, thanks for the question. I, <clears throat> um, we've, you know, the, 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 there's a pretty uh, big current these days of a post-liberal thought. Um, criticisms of liberalism are, are much more common now than they were um, right, right. 20, 30 years ago. Um, the position that uh, Comunio um, took uh, a few decades ago, spearheaded by my my father, was was a sort of a rogue position um, <laughs> yes. back then that that you know got got ignored by both sides, more or less. But um, uh, these days, there's 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 a there's a good deal more. Uh, it's 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 actually got a, a mainstream presence, which is kind of uh, remarkable in itself. But I you know rather than the, I I did a criticism of of liberalism in the in the previous. Um, book the the um, freedom from reality it wasn't simply a criticism of liberalism but that was a a, a good chunk right. of the, the center right. but i thought you know it's it's we need to start also proposing something uh positive you know try to think of what what in fact does a catholic vision of political order look like and so you know that's that was kind of the the basic inspiration now politics of the real um uh the idea is is um, basically that, um, you know, I think, I think Eric Vogelin was right, uh, to identify, uh, not a kind of a new Gnosticism, uh, uh, right, right. Uh, as, as, as more or less having, um, infected, taken over, uh, our, our, our modern sense of the political order. Um, and one can go on and on about that. This is, you know, it's, it's, this is also a fairly common thesis ed phaser just wrote something about this not too long ago <clears throat> and you know you know uh whether right, right. whether it gets narcissism right exactly i mean there, there's some but but the, you know the the basic idea is um there's a kind of a a, a radical abstraction a, a a loss of a um uh, of a sense of 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 meaning and reality that uh is, that guides our common life together i mean nothing uh, nothing uh, means anything, you know, in the in the public sphere because there's no there are no um, sort of publicly universally um, accessible realities that 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 things right, right. things that bind us together. So um, I, I I thought you know <clears throat> rather than starting with a with some sort of lofty thesis, and of course there's 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 a need for big thesis too <laughs> there's um, a need for a lofty thesis yes <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, there's something to be said with just you know starting with with the real and and right building up from there so that that was kind of the you know and i don't know if some people have asked me why why the grapes on the front cover and um i had a friend I, who, who yeah, go ahead did you, you have a uh, no i was just uh realizing that that's the first time I noticed that there were grapes on the front cover. <laughs> See, Larry, it's the real. You need to, you need to. Um, I guess I just don't pay attention to dust jackets. Okay. Well, so, so, and, and the thing is that the, the, the image of, of, of the grape, I mean, it just, it struck me as perfect in one, in two respects, because on the one hand, um, wild grapes are awful, you know, grapes, require cultivation so they need right. a human community and culture and 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 kind of a, a cultivation in order to uh produce and be fruitful and be you know um for their kind of natural reality to present itself and then on the flip side um uh human community gathers around grapes you know the the, the wine uh, on the table that there's there's right something there's something about having a, a real thing like and there, there are few things that are more <laughs> real than wine you know um, um uh, yeah. it, it, it's it's you know we we recognize that that wine has history that that, that there's a culture you you taste the earth in it and 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 there's something about that that beautiful thing that gathers community around itself so it's 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 you know in, in kind of in a nutshell uh to, to switch metaphors oh, i like that um, yeah, like, to be honest with you i actually now remember i do recall seeing that there were grapes on here so mm -hmm. yeah so that's not the first time <laughs> right. yeah yeah no i mean you know uh, once if, if i may uh uh a little story uh fessio uh father fessio just he grows wine he grows grapes now he does he does and i and i remember once his 
his, um, you know, getting a sparkle in his eye, talking about how how grapes want to be wine. He said, you know, <laughs> there's, there's a sort of a natural in order in order to make grape juice, man has to artificially intrude on the natural process. Oh, yeah, he said, yeah. like like Mr. Welch, who was a Protestant, um, <laughs> artificially, uh, you know, halt the process because there's a natural <laughs> desire to be wine, and I, I think. That's, oh. Great image. That that's. Uh, I just. I, I don't want to get too far off topic, but I uh, about four months ago, I had a conference call with Ignatius Press, some people uh -huh. there for a book I'm ready, and he was there, and uh, I thought I was going to have this lengthy conversation about my book. It ended up we talked. Oh, well, he, Father Fessio talked for about thirty minutes on the glories of winemaking. Uh, he's he he's very at age 80, 81, whatever it is now. He's he's suddenly really discovered this. But anyway, that that's that's a great sort of uh, lead into things here. And and you brought up uh, uh, and Rodney, I, I want you to eventually comment on this too because you actually uh, this is more in your wheelhouse than it is in mine. You've written far more on it. But the the critique of liberalism that you that you engaged in in your previous book and in this one, I think, is very intriguing. And I mean, and you mentioned in your comments just now that how you know twenty thirty years ago, Comunio under your father was already sort of carving out this critique of liberalism specifically to a critique of John Courtney Murray and, and, and its Catholic iteration. Would, would you lump Comunio and your own position in with just sort of this generic category of post-liberal? Would you make any nuances beyond saying, Oh, I'm a post-liberal? Um, maybe um, you could comment. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's, that's interesting. I, I, you know, the, the post-liberals come in many stripes. I mean, there right. are some radical progressive ones and, uh, you know, socialist versions and then integralist versions. And so, yeah, I mean, one has to be very careful. I what, what I and I and I don't often use the. In fact, I don't even know if um, I use the word in the book. It's not it's not a common uh, category. I don't maybe. I don't recall. No. Yeah. But but you know I I like the so the press um, that published this book it's kind of a funny little story how 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 that happened uh, I didn't know that I was getting to know the guys um, at the New Polity Press um, Andrew Willer Jones and and um, uh, uh, and his his Mark Barnes and, and Mark Barnes yeah and, um, to um, some really really interesting and wonderful people uh, that that uh, are. You know, creating a kind of a community around this idea. They 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 embrace the the um, post liberal moniker, and and I, I think you know insofar I I'm happy that that term is around because as I said, it indicates that um, uh, there's a, a there's a new willingness now to ask really fundamental questions about things that that used to be so completely taken for granted that people would have no idea what you're talking about if you tried to raise a question. We're sort of be beyond that. I mean, partly because things are so out of control. Uh, um, there's such a, uh, a, a collapse in the, in the public sphere now that, um, so, you know, it's, it's sort of a bad sign in one respect, but um, in, in yeah, another, yeah. it's, it's very interesting that it poses the question, but, it, but as I said, you know, so in that sense, I like it. Um, but I think one, one needs to be careful because sometimes reacting to uh, uh, right. something that you end up defining yourself specifically over against it. And that's usually a really bad move. Well, that's sort of why I asked the question, because, you know, the criticisms are immediately going to come by people who want to rush in with labels. You know, oh, he's a Catholic. He's a sort of resource monk kind of guy, philosopher. Yeah. He's critical of liberalism. Ergo, he's some version of an integralist. Ergo, he's some yeah. kind of post-liberal whack job. Yeah. Uh, and, and so, you know, what, to, but I would encourage anybody to read this book. I mean, you have to be a little bit metaphysically astute to yeah. be able to understand the book. It's not an easy sled. Uh, but nevertheless, if, if you are interested in these questions, don't, don't rush in to label anybody that is sort of no, not th liberal. Thank you for that, Larry. I, I, um, uh, I, I've actually seen, uh, I've been grouped with integralists. Um, yes. And I, I, you know, I mean, <laughs> I, I would have thought on the cover sort of, it's clear that that, and, and, you know, there's a <laughs> yeah, between liberalism and yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that wouldn't, but I think, I think, you know, for people typically, if you're not 
a neoconservative, then you must, and you're Catholic, then you must be some form of integralist or something. Yeah, I, you know, I mean, this, this yeah. is, this is, this is part of, this is part of the difficulty. In fact, I mean, we don't attend to things in their reality and their concreteness in a way that requires us to be attentive um, and 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 to 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 recognize nuance and and the complexities of reality and and instead you know we want to immediately make right. judgments and kind right. of create a sort of political noise and and in that sense you know black white left right it's all it's you, you just want the easy categories um, and that's part of the problem i know i mean i ran into it i uh, ran into a problem in social media a few weeks ago uh, Facebook to be particular, where I was talking just on somebody's Facebook page, uh, Mark Shea, to be honest. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and all of a sudden somebody was attacking me. Oh, yeah, you're that guy that supports uh, Schindler because you reviewed his book. And so you're an integralist, too, just like he is. Oh, no. like, oh, oh wow. Oh, wow. I didn't realize I, I'm not an integralist. Neither is he. And nevertheless, <laughs> that's what we are, apparently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's why I wanted to give you the opportunity to say, hey, Rodney, do you do, do you have a question? fomenting in your in your mind there i, I do if that's okay uh, oh, well, yeah. of course but, okay that's why you're here <laughs> yeah no it's it, it's it is kind of a maybe like a two-prong question or and and i'm not sure they're as related as they ought to be if they're if it's a two-prong question but 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 you whatever you can do what you want with them uh dave um the the first one uh th i think a, a a a concern that people might have if they read this is that this is just a return to sort of anti-modernist mm -hmm. you, you know, sort of a position that, that there's nothing right. about liberalism that we can work with. We have to simply wholesale reject it and, and stuff like that. And uh, so it might seem to be a retreating to a sort of pre-Vatican II stance about the modern world and about yeah. liberalism and things like this. So that, that would be sort of one thing. And if I may, then I'll just kind of throw in another thing with that. Yeah. I don't think that's the case, by the way, but I think that 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 sure, sure. yeah, no, I'd it's... Like, uh, yeah, I would like to hear you address that. And and the second thing has to do with something you said in your in your in your in your previous comments about how, you know, in your first book, you're more just kind of laying out a criticism of Lockean sort of notions of freedom that could kind of get sucked up into the into the broadly liberal uh, tradition. Um, and in this book, you actually try to propose something constructive. Yeah. And this is something I actually think is is somewhat new. I mean, I, if I can just speak yes. autobiographically for a second, in the mid 90s, I, I read the first piece by your 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 father in Communio. I was mm -hmm. a thoroughgoing sort of neocon, you know, mm -hmm. or, you know, and a, sort of a Straussian. And uh, and uh, and I read your father. I don't know. Can't remember the piece now. Something about liberalism, in American order, you know, something along those right, lines. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's I, had a he's had a few articles about that topic. I think. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. Variations on that title. Yeah, that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I mean, I just I was flabbergasted when I read it. It literally just blew me away, and I knew everything had to change. Like I just knew that I could no longer go on just kind of playing. And I was a first things reader, you know, and you know, and all that. And I remember, you know, walking after that with with uh, a guy that we all know, Eric Manchester, who was a student in philosophy yeah. at Marquette at the time. And we took a long walk as I was walking my my yellow lab, Milton. And I was telling him <laughs> all about the article. And he was also just like, oh, my God, you know, just, yeah. it, you know, it was, it was just really, uh, you know, kind of profound. But to go back to my question, largely your father's work was a work of sort of demolition. Yeah. You know, I don't mean that in a negative way. It's, that needed to be demolished. Like, I mean, we were all kind of sucked into this thing, kind of almost like sleepwalkers. And it was so uh, liberating to just say, oh, my gosh, I don't have to be a right liberal or a left liberal or, you know, whatever. I, I right. You know, there are right. other ways. To right. But but I do. I, so I'm asking, is, do you see this sort of yourself as a bit of a development of the communio position to some degree, even beyond, say, Baltazar and Ratzinger, you know, uh, to, to, you know, to bring them into the mix. So those are my two questions. Yeah. yeah no, no. Thank you. Um, uh, and, and I think they are they are they're related. Um, uh, OK, good. Yeah, yeah, I, but. <clears throat> You know, to the first, it, it, it is, it, uh, you're, you're right, this is the question that everyone has, and it's a question that, that um, uh, it always gets put to me. And um, there, there seems to be, um, you know, that this, this anti-modern thing uh, uh, is, is, 
you know, becoming sort of a tired rant and so forth. And um, yeah, and my response to that is, um, um, I, I, at one point it occurred to me to, uh, to use a different term, which uh, I don't use that consistently, but I think it's worth pointing or, or presenting here. Um, uh, there's, uh, I've, I've, I've had a tendency to present the position that I'm trying to articulate as, as pre pre-modern. Um, but the, the, pro the problem with that term is that it suggests that um, this is the good old days as opposed to the, the bad new days. And so everything after a certain point is tainted. And, and the and thing it might also imply a sort of kind of facile restoration. Is of course. Yeah. 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 So, and, go ahead. And, and we all recognize the, the, right. the, the problems with that. You know, it occurred to me, maybe the better term, it, because it's not it's not a temporal category. It's. Uh, to think of modernity not as a um, uh, a span of time that has a certain kind of ethos and, and set of yes. presuppositions, but but in fact uh, a determinate content that in, you know is um, may or may not exist at any time. Uh, I, I, I I think that's a healthier way to to, to look at it. I have a couple of things to say about it. But the but the first thing is I think the the better term maybe instead of pre modern is extra modern. Ha <laughs> ha. So not pre-modern, uh, right. not postmodern, but extra modern. And the point is, it's a it's a position that doesn't want to accept the horizon set by modernity. Um, mm, that doesn't right, mean necessarily right. going back. In fact, it can't mean that. Um, and then, and then the second thing is, you know, if 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 you do identify modernity with a set of presuppositions, then what are they? And and that's one of the things that I tried to articulate in this book. And um, you know, it might in one respect seem like a, a kind of a, a, an outrageously kind of um, audacious and, you know, irresponsibly audacious kind of a, 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 a argument or a thesis. But, I, but in another respect, I think it's just obviously true. And that is, what, what is it that defines modernity? What defines modernity, I think, at its heart is a rejection of the Catholic Church. Yeah, yeah. So th yeah. that that's it's 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 not a rejection of Christianity necessarily. It's not a not a, a rejection of of the classical tradition. I mean, in in you know, they're they're all sorts. You know, the, the the modernists love reading the classics, and 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 you know, and <clears throat> it's it's a rejection of the Catholic Church understand as the a real tradition. So not just a set of, of propositions or ideas, but but a, a, a reality, a body that that um, that exists in history, and and has determined a culture in a in a permanent way. You know, as I as I argue in the book, I think I think it's that there's a it's a kind of paradigmatic culture because it integrates the Greeks, the Romans, and the Jews. Um, nature, right, right. Jesus, nomos, and theos. You know, nature culture and and god and, and religion and it synthesizes that and that that's the I, it seems to me that's the that's the heart of the matter um the the the, the you know the first liberal uh, political thinkers um were an attempt to to separate political authority from that tradition effectively and and you know and then that's that also was the case epistemologically you know in science in science and in ethics i mean and all the in, in economics all of these different um realms that their their efforts to to uh generate a new culture that somehow is not in an organic unity with this with with the, the catholic church so if you define it if you def if it is the case now somebody might dispute that but if it is the case that modernity is defined as being anti-catholic if that's what if that's what most decisively defines it then then we have to be if we're catholic we have to be anti anti-modern in that respect you know now yeah that doesn't mean that you know the the, the 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 most radical rejections of christian truth the heresies generated some of the most glorious achievements of the church mm -hmm. um and you know, and and that's still the case. I mean, I there there, there can be a, a certain um, paradoxical sort of fruitfulness in the in the in the modern era. I I, I find a lot of postmodern philosophy really interesting and insightful. And you know, so it's not it's not like I think 
as one of my uh, uh, friends who is very much a kind of self-proclaimed old, old friends, old classmates, uh, a self-professed uh, traditionalist and, and integralist uh, once said, um, uh, there is nothing worth reading past the 13th century except Gabriel <laughs> Marcel. For some reason, that was what he said. Oh, well. <laughs> you know, <laughs> nothing except else. for Marcel. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, isn't that curious? But nothing else. And that's just that's just absurd. <laughs> that that's uh that's kind of crazy <laughs> nothing nothing okay i like that extra modern and uh, extra modern yeah and does, i mean kind of uh, just reminded me too in a, in a complimentary sort of way of of augusto donoce's uh point about modernity being a kind of that it has to justify itself by essentially negating all traditions that came before uh, and obviously he would think that Catholicism would be front and center of one of the traditions that's being negated. Yeah. yeah. But what would, uh, to, to, and I, I, I'll let Rodney speak again. Um, you know, much has been made, for example, of, of Pierre Manet, uh, you know, the history, his history of liberalism, where he sort of makes a similar point that modernity is characterized fundamentally by its rejection of Catholicism. But he doesn't reach the same conclusion from that that you do. <laughs> no, no. In fact, I was just reading uh, some passages uh, from that book to my wife. You know, we have a curious marriage. Um, I was <laughs> reading some passages to her uh, a, a couple days ago. Um, how, how extraordinary. I mean, you know, he, he um, uh, so when I, when I make that claim, I, I consider it tragic. You know, and, and in a way it would be it yeah. would be a, a, sort of the almost the um, the the reverse of what you just articulated, Larry. I think I would say that because it rejects the Catholic Church, it rejects all traditions. Yeah, that's a good I mean, way. A curious sort of I, I'm just not saying that that would be Del Noche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, no, no, no. You're yeah. right. You're right. But, um, uh, you know, he, he says that uh, that Chris, that Catholicism was inherently contradictory, self-contradictory. This, this was the passage mm -hmm. I was reading to her, that it, um, uh, you know, meant to be um, a make a claim on the whole of human life, um, but at the same time, it was not a kingdom of this world. It was, it's kind of an eschatological reality. So it seems, in one respect, to have nothing to do with politics, and then in another respect, to make all sorts of claims on politics. And he says that's a contradiction. And so for for him, there's there's uh, um, the sense that uh, the the you know the liberalism right. was kind of was fated, you know, to happen. That there was no other way to resolve this. And I, I just don't, I just don't think that that's. I mean. Well, he's wrong. He's wrong. There you go. To put it really simple, this you know, is where his case paradox. falls to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Monty Python. There. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's a difference between paradox and contradiction. Yes. And the, and there is a paradox about the Catholic vision that is, you know, in the world but not of the world, uh, and and those kinds of things. But it's not a contradiction. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and may I just say another thing on, on the score? Yeah. Here, here's another th way that I would I would be very different from the integralist because there are you know we might come back to this at a certain point. There are there are a number of things about integralism that I appreciate, um, but I, I actually think that the medieval synthesis was not yet complete. I, I think that there were deficiencies, oh, um, yeah. Yeah. and and that we're we're still looking for. Um, you know, this this uh, attempt to embody the paradox of the Catholic Church in relation to the political order is something we, we, we're we still looking for a proper resolution. Um, I, I think, you know, um, it wasn't that the, it was false. I mean, I think that that in a way there's there's a kind of paradigmatic character to the medieval world. But there was still, I, yeah. you know, I don't think they quite. Yeah. It, there, there are parallels that one can make with the philosophy theology relationship. I think um, th those are analogous to the kind of ecclesial political relationship. Um, well, I mean, would you say that the medievals took the, the constitutive nature category of, of, say, history seriously enough or even human subjectivity seriously enough? Um, I, uh, right. I mean, I, I, not, not, not at all. In fact, I was, I was just making that argument with, uh, with my class, um, uh, the other day. Um, I think, you know, th uh, and, and is that a gain? I mean, I, I, I think there's, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, I, I had a, another, uh, philosophy friend point out to me that, um, 
that one never finds the expression, the meaning of life um, <laughs> in the classical tradition, whereas John Paul II said it all over the place. And, and uh, you know, he, he was raising that as a criticism of John Paul II, that he's kind of embracing this. But I, I actually think there's something really beautiful about, the, about that phrase and what it implies. And, and this brings out a dimension that wasn't there in the, but I'd be interested to hear what you what you both think of that um, uh, that point about history and subjectivity and those kinds of things. Rodney, you want to comment on that? Uh, well, I mean, I'm not sure I can say anything particularly profound, but I I think that um, I, I do think that there was still a tendency to sort of um, let Aristotle sort of handle the thinking about sort of the natural order and, you know, kind of what is a human being and all that stuff yes, in, in an ordinate way and not allow certain distinctively Christian elements to go back and, and, uh, and, and, and tweak that a bit or to change or transform it in, in a way that wouldn't destroy it, but would certainly enrich it. And, right. and, uh, and I, so I think, yeah, the interpersonal dimension, the priority of love, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. maybe the fact that in Thomas, you don't get a lot of attention to the transcendental beauty, yeah. you know, th th things like that. I mean, right. It, right. yeah. And, 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 and that's, to introduce that's, those that's things. Effect of politics, right. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, to introduce those things is not to actually, I mean, it, what, what's interesting about it is you, you can develop those things and see, wait a minute. Yes, this actually brings out dimensions of Aquinas. It's not a, it's not a, um, you know, a simple correction or an intrusion or something. Um, and, right. and to my yeah. mind, that's, that's, that's the sign of novelty that is true. It's novelty that actually allows you to see the tradition with new eyes. Yes. Yeah. And, and yeah. that reliance on Aristotle, it's, it strikes me that uh, there is such there's a kind of a, a lack of an appreciation for uh, the, the, the oh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, 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 the imminence of God. I'm, I'm, having a, I'm having a senior moment. The full significance, the full historical significance of God's imminence. And I think that's a theme. Of course, of course the medievals and the patristics talk about it, but it leaves them a little squeamish because mm -hmm. of the issue of God's, you know, impassibility, and yeah. he's getting a little too, he's getting a little too intimate with the vagaries mm -hmm. of temporality, and it takes the modern era and and the provocations of people like Hegel, yeah. bef before we start really taking seriously the notion if God really did become incarnate, if he's more intimate to to me than I am to myself, mm -hmm. that has radical implications for our. Well, especially for Trinitarian theology, and well, we could go on and on and on about, you know. So you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, no, that's 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 really true. And you know, it's w one of the things that's kind of interesting about this. And th this is a mystery. I mean, this is something I still want to think a lot about. Um, but um, you know, you get the sense in the medieval world, in one respect, when you read the philosophy and theology. Um, that there's a kind of an impatience for the eschaton. I mean, you know, that, that there's that that, that yeah. you know one sees through the material world immediately to the spiritual significance. I mean, there's there's this, you know. On the other hand, it's actually you know when you study the material culture of the Middle Ages, there was an extraordinary love of things in their thingness. I mean, yeah. the feel of wood and the the colors were so full of significance and a richness of of, yeah. of of a love of matter and it's odd so we talk more about the body and and but at the very same time we seem to have lost this kind of affection for for materiality well, and, and it's a curious thing it's something really um well, they, they live closer to things yeah. than we do we live in a world of digitized abstraction yeah and uh, they lived in the world of you know, no toilets and the Black Death. And, you know, yeah. You know, there, and I don't mean to get vulgar, but there was an immediate encounter with the natural world that maybe <laughs> imposed imposed yeah. upon them the realness of things. So they felt a need to escape it. But, but you yeah. know, the, 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 I mean, you know, just the, the feasting that they did. Oh you know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's 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 extraordinary, and the and the the the, the guilds yeah. that were that were formed around matter it was it was the the material that you know stone those all that work all those that worked with stone were in you know gathered together and i i just find that so 
so it uh, is. striking. Um, you know, it's it's obviously connected to this larger question about. Yeah, I, so I want to come. I do want to come back to your book here now, though, because I, I I have a couple of of, of sure. further questions. One of the uh, when when you look at the conciliar debate, for example, on dignitatis humanae, you immediately see, for example, the the Murrayite position and others beginning to jockey that that would want to say that the, we're going to argue for this separationist model, and we're going to argue for it on the grounds that the state has no competence in religious matters, yeah. right? So I know you you deal with this in your book, and I think you deal with it brilliantly. So I was hoping you could share with our viewers why it is you think that it's wrong to say yeah. that the state has no competence in religious matters. Oh, where to start? Um, I, I know that it's that <laughs> on page I have, you know, on page 272. <laughs> That's where we start. Page 272. 272. You really get down to the, where you state that both the state and the church are concerned with both temporal and spiritual matters. Well, I mean, you know, it, you know this is this is part of the thing. And, 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 and to be honest, this is one thing that I think we are in a position now to develop more explicitly than was done in, in the Middle Ages. But uh, um, uh, I, I've, I've been struck by Aristotle's idea that um, political, which Aquinas affirms, shockingly, mm -hmm. when, when you read it, you just think, wait a minute, he's, this is more than you would expect him to say. You know, uh, Aqu uh, Aristotle and then Aquinas affirms that political society is the highest society and that it is the most and the most perfect society. And it's uh, the highest society because it is ordered to the highest good in the highest respect. Um, I mean, that's that, you, you that's can't a lot get, of highs. Yeah, that's right. You can't get past <laughs> that, right? And so, so what does that mean? I mean, the the idea that religious life isn't part of the city is um, ridiculous. And now, uh, to say that 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 religious life is part of the city doesn't mean that we collapse. And this is the point that nobody, it seems to me, quite. People just don't have the patience to think about this. Um, uh, to say that the um, that religious life is part of our public life, it has to be. It's a it, it, in a way, God is the 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 res publica. Um, right. That doesn't mean that 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 isn't a collapse of the church and the state. It's it's you can we can recognize um, the, the 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 profound ordering to the whole of of uh, of political authority. And at the same time, recognize that it is uh, uh, responsible for the whole with respect to life in this world, as right. opposed to uh, uh, and, or as distinct from um, the, the eschaton and salvation so that the state doesn't save us, but um, it is actually responsible for our being able to live um, the worship of God as a, as a kind of a political reality. You know, and that that seems right. so strange. And in order to, and that one of the reasons that seems so strange is we've got such a reduced, impoverished sense of what politics is. Oh my so, yes, <laughs> there's there's a great deal of of remedial work that has to be done to make any of these sentences actually resonate properly. But you know, we need to recover a sense that the um, that we relate to God as communities, and and that doesn't mean just the community of the church, but that means, you know, the community of marriage in a most, in a very obvious way, but also in, 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 uh, uh, in the political order simply. Um, and, you know, I, I'd have a lot to say, I don't want to sort of go on and on about, so I'll just leave that there. But so, so this is, you know, and, and that's why the, 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 uh, now finally I'm answering your question to say that the, the state is incompetent in religion. Some people have interpreted that to mean that the state is indifferent to religious matters and uh right and and, and the, the the problem with that in all sorts of subtle ways and i and i spell out the argument in some detail there that ends up being uh a a, a, a kind of ter, um totalitarian perspective actually yeah that, because there's no limit principle outside of government itself there you go which is yeah. why which is why the american constant a domain that the government carves out for us by self-limiting itself yeah. is part of the problematic, right, that you point out in your book, because it's the government doing the self-limiting on itself. There's no there's no boundary beyond the government that's a limit factor on government per se. That's right. it, you know, and so what the government gives today, the government can take away tomorrow. 
Yeah. Rodney, do you want to, do you want to get your two cents in here? Well, yeah, just, I mean, just, yeah, just to piggyback off of all that. I mean, uh, it seems to me that it's, it's, it's a huge thing to point out and you allude to it in the book, you know, here and there uh, in, in, in really helpful ways, but you know, this, this invention of a new idea of religion is, is mm -hmm. really sinister, yeah. right? Because, Absolutely. because it, you start to circumscribe it in this, this little area where you can neatly define it. And then that means that anything like a secular person says, they're immediately get the benefit of the doubt precisely because what they're saying is not religious. But if you think about like, what, what is a person saying right. when they say it's totally acceptable for a woman to kill the child in her womb? Right. 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 Now, there, that's obviously not just like common sense. Like, it's not like, oh, well, obviously that's just true that it, that makes just perfect sense. Right. Yeah. But the reason I'm, I'm offended, is, though, Rodney, that you assumed it was a woman killing the pregnant person, the pregnant. Yes. Person. Yeah. I, yeah. Can't teach yeah. An old dog. I'm still learning. Dave. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. You should say <laughs> yeah, yeah. persons yeah. with yeah. wombs. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Persons with, um, you know, the, 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 because it's precisely because it's not religious to yeah. say that. Therefore, that's the position that's going to be the dominant position. I mean, it's, it's absurd. Is it, this isn't a, like you're not making a statement about something really profoundly complex and mysterious. And, you know, it, it, so it, there's a sense in which what happens in a, in, a, in a secular society is the state actually amasses to itself both responsibilities, both for the temporal but yeah. then also for these things that touch on transcendent realities, like yeah. what is the status of a child in the womb? Right. I mean, we, 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 yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. and this this is kind of a tri trivial sort of example, but um, I'm incompetent uh, at fixing automobiles. All right, I I can't I, I I couldn't fix a car to save my life. I'm incompetent. So what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm equally indifferent I, uh, to whoever happens to offer to, to fix my car, whether it be, you know, my wife, my my right. ten year old son, or no? If, to, if if I if I am genuinely competent, what do I do? I actually look for an authority, uh, uh, and entrust myself to the authority, and that's a sign of my recognition of my incompetence. Right. 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 I, you know, and if the state were in comp were it genuinely incompetent in religion, that would mean that it actually has to recognize an authority. And if it doesn't, it, it it's actually calling the shots of what counts as religion, what you know, and that, that's yep. that's the point that you made there, Larry, yep. about that there's, right. no, there's then no limit to it. It 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 becomes the supreme yep. judge, actually. Yeah. Yeah, along those lines, you're also um you're also a little bit critical in the book, but I can't to be honest with you, remember exactly why I'm trying to think of how we know how a lot of people normally apply the concept of subsidiarity. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you know, um, uh, yeah, that, that one's easy. I mean, uh, typically in a kind of neoconservative way, we say that between the state and the individual, there are uh, mediating, mediating institutions, mediating right. institutions and yeah. one of those is the church. The problem is, and, and you know, when we say one of those is the church, we've we've kind of made the state the overarching reality, right, right. Uh, that sort of sets out the 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 playing field according to its rules, and then the church becomes one of the players there, and that that has it exactly backwards. I mean, subsidiarity is 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 r fundamentally important; it's indispensable. But we have to recognize that the highest order is the ecclesial one. And yeah. you know, in a certain sense, the state is a community inside of the church. Yeah. That's a, yeah. the, the the proper way. Now, again, people then freak out and say theocracy and so forth. Uh, to, to to be inside no. the church doesn't mean that the church is running the government. Right. Um, uh, you have to have a more profound sense of what it means to be inside. Well, and, and on top of the fact too that a lot of these uh, conversations that we have here in the United States. It seems to me always presume that the American model of the relationship between church and state is is the only one in the modern Western world. I mean, yeah. I mean, in in Germany, people are taxed to support the churches, but we don't have we don't have a theocracy in Germany. I mean, the UK, you know, the Church of England, but there's no theocracy in England. So I I sometimes think Americans just get absolutely hysterical yeah. about these things. Yeah. That if if there's any 
any hint at all of any sort of cross fertilization of the spiritual, the temporal, the, you know, the church, the state. Well, then, by golly, it's it. You you've got a theocratic right. fascism around the corner. And I mean, you just see, there's just it's so such a crass way of thinking. I mean, there's such a failure to make distinction. And you know, b- behind that is a sense that Americans were the ones who finally figured this out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but you know, I mean, and again, there, there, you, you, the the post liberal movement, you have to respect it. It's call, you know, uh, it's calling that out. Yeah, um, yeah. it's yeah. actually raising questions, and that's a good thing. Yeah, very good, Rodney. You want to? You have anything? I, well, I, yeah, it, yeah. Go, I want to go back to the second part of my first. Question. Oh yeah, yeah. We, we never got, we got we got waylaid, but that's okay. I, you know, I, I I think that was a good way. That was a good direction that we went. But yeah, to go back to the constructive part of your your book, that was the thing that really uh, got me going, you know, the, the most, because it seems to me like the most uh, specific, complete statement of a sort of what what na- what do we do then if we reject yeah. this, then what? Yeah. Uh, and and so so do you see that as a little bit of a development or? You know, I mean, yeah. you know, I, um, I I have felt that that's been needed, um, uh, you know, um, D- developing and when you're you're talking about great figures like Balthazar and Ratzinger and 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 my father, you know, it's more catching up. But but um, but there but there is there is a, a you know a sense of of unfolding things that you know it's the positive moment. Now, the the what do we do now question is a really difficult one, and I do, I, I don't I sort of gesture towards that at the end. But but the, the middle chapters um, re- reorienting things. I think that's what I called the section, something like that. Uh, yeah. Is 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 meant to try to you know think of what would these fundamental realities of political life look like if we if we think of them in a kind of an extra modern way. And the and the central chapter of the book is the one on property, actually. Um, oh yeah. And 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 reconceiving uh, the 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 meaning of property. I think that's that's some, something that I that I really would like to develop more in the future. But I, I it strikes me as absolutely you know getting getting back to the you know the ground, um, uh, in a in a word. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, as a small time farmer myself, I, I I give a big two thumbs up to that uh, <laughs> because it, it it certainly I think that's certainly true. I think you're onto something. Absolutely. But it is difficult, isn't it? It's, it's difficult. I, I really sometimes get tired of the, of the mantra. Oh, well, what do you think we should do then? You know, like, <laughs> Oh, M- M- Mr. Big shot. You think, you know, everything. No, I don't know everything. And so it, it, you know, diagnostics are easier than, you know, prescriptive, of course, yeah. pre- prescriptive solutions because we, we live in this reality and we live it from within. And so we can see its problems, but, and we can critique those problems. We can say, this is wrong. This is bad. This is dragging us down. But precisely because we live within the horizon of our times, one of the great problems, it seems to me with modern liberalism is that it has a hegemony on our imagination so that it, it also forestalls our ability to imagine differently. Yeah. And so I sometimes think that that the the political liberal interlocutor and critic of of, of our position is, is is sometimes being unfair yeah. because I don't think they're acknowledging the hegemony of their own imaginative oppression of any ability to think because because their vision is so totalizing. Yeah. Right. And, and, and we live within that totalization. I mean, it's very, very similar to saying to somebody who lived in France in the 13th century. Uh, you know, please imagine something other than this sort of Christendom thing that you live in. Yeah. You yeah. know, it, it wasn't quite as totalizing yeah. as liberalism yeah. is. No, I mean, that's and that that was that was Rodney's point, you know, to to express the ideas that are dictated by that hegemony is to be taken to be objective and and you know um uh uh you know um tell you know basically speaking the truth unbiased um you know having the proper point of view and 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 that's i mean the the problem is you know so here's the here's here's part of the problem is is um precisely because of the gnosticism that that 
you know, in, has imbued our, our sense of the political order that's connected to a liberal anthropology and so forth. And, and, and the, the, the absence of, of reality, you know, the public square, uh, I mean, even that language doesn't even make any sense anymore. Um, has become so evacuated. I, I was I was thinking yeah. that, that that the words that we say don't don't mean as soon as they enter into that sphere, they just they they just stop meaning. I, I was thinking uh, this morning um, about Homer, and uh, you know that those there's there's something when you when you read Homer, there's something just so invigorating about it. And, and one of the things is. Uh, uh, how how rich and full the the the, the natural physical world is so world world is so when when they speak you know the the the, the winged words uh, escape from their teeth and and the words that come out of their mouths they have a kind of an objective effectiveness you you have no yeah. control over them they fly and they they make things happen there's a kind of whereas I was thinking in our world. Our, our words are, are like dead pigeons, you know, they, they <laughs> yeah. enter into the public sphere and then they thud, thud and yeah. then, you yeah. know, and, yeah. and I mean, and then that's, that's just an extraordinary thing, but I think we all recognize that. Um, and, and it's created such a, such a sense of, of um, a kind of a political nihilism and such a sense of a void in our, in our common life. Um yeah, I think that's. I think that is so true, and I, I think uh, 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 among. Well, let me let me back up just one second and say, uh, to, to, there might be people you know watching this, listening to this, who who are thinking to themselves, you know, who aren't all into the you know the intellectual high end academic critique of liberalism. What what's so bad about the liberal approach to the American liberal approach to religion and separation of church and state? What's the big deal? You know, you, you can go to church. You can open up a soup kitchen. Oh, you're so oppressed. Please explain. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm help help. I'm being oppressed. You know, uh, please explain to the audience mm -hmm. why that is actually quite wrong and why our current way of doing things is actually very detrimental, both to our, the religious sense and therefore to the common good. Yeah, I mean, um, uh the 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 promise of liberalism is 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 tolerance and what that actually i mean there's the truth that is in there that that that's the distorted truth is that we want to love one another unconditionally and affirm one another uh but the the, the point is that we we can do that in a really um a, a, a sustained and a substantial uh uh and and robust way only if we recognize the truth of that 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 is something true and right on all of us the, the the problem is in the liberal form we think that the best way to ensure this is to say you have your ideas and i have mine yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but and we think that that's respecting but if i if i say you have your ideas i have mine what i'm saying is the ideas that you have mean nothing to me and right. can't mean anything to anyone else they can only mean what you want them to mean to yourself and so this this gesture of respect is actually depriving you of saying something meaningful. <laughs> and, yeah, and it carries weight. You know, the, a, a simple, uh, a concrete example of that is what what has happened to marriage. So in the in the redefinition of marriage, uh, it looks like we're extending. So you know, there's traditional marriage, and this is something that. Uh, only a certain percentage of the population has been able to enjoy. And we're going to take that reality and extend it to other people. But, uh, and so what could be wrong with that is, you know, you, you still get to be married you can do it any way you want, but, but here's the point in order to extend it in that way, we have to change the meaning of it. It can no longer mean right. this substantial union of a man and woman that is naturally uh uh ordained to to procreation and so forth or we have to evacuate its meaning well right and so so in fact in order to extend the meaning we have to change its meaning for everybody and we all now nobody can be married anymore <laughs> that's in, right in in the in yeah. public you know in yeah. terms of the public reality of the thing and yes. you know so that that, that is that a respect for it's not, you know. That's right. I mean, gay marriage is actually 
the nullification of marriage. That's right. And so now nobody is actually really married. And how, how is that free? How is that healthy? How is that respectful to the culture? That's right. And, and Larry, it's the nullification of marriage, which means what? The nullification of the body, which yes. means what? The nullification of matter, which means things don't mean anything. There's actually yes. this, this um, and, and those, are, those are all bound together logically. You, you so can't... is there any such, oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go no, ahead. No, 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 that's, please. Is there anything left that is actually a res publica? Yeah, right. That's right. That's yeah. right. I mean, um, you know, you know what what happens is kind of perverse things um, uh, take their place. Things that don't warrant that. Um, I mean, this is a very controversial topic, but you know, public health or something. Um, um, you know that that what 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 happens is is because there can't be a substantial kind of reality that we enjoy in common and and live in common that defines the political sphere um what what takes the place is is laws and rules understood as pure sort of coercive intrusions meant for our protection and so forth right. and, and and you know suddenly um uh the the state begins to become quite um uh, uh terrifying as a as a as a as a as an artificial creature um yeah Oh, that, yeah. is, that is so. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's great because, uh, you know, it's probably that's probably a question I should have see if I were any kind of an interviewer, I would have led with that question. Of <laughs> what's so what's so bad about liberalism? Eh? Uh, <laughs> that's what kind of what we're talking about here. Uh, but th on the other hand, that wasn't the main focus. Uh, I mean, it was the focus of the sort of the beginning of this book, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it's not really the main focus of the book. Uh, when we could talk about what's wrong with liberalism and for, forever. Um, uh, Rodney, you, you wanted to follow up on your follow up on your follow up? Uh, well, no, I, I just I did just to, along with that. I, I was reminded of a part of the book that I thought was so interesting. I mean, I've, I've read this before in Thomas, but it really hit me in, in this particular section. To kind of answer your question, Larry, me trying to summarize David um, is uh <laughs> You know, the, the, the one thing that's, I think, really tragic about it is, is, is it's convinced all of us Catholics that we are Catholics out of sort of private choice. Yeah, right, right. right. So the, the reason I'm a Catholic in America is because exactly. I have I, I'm the final arbiter of whether or not Catholicism is true. Right. And I've decided individually <clears throat> that it is. And so in a sense, it's almost like in this, I hope this isn't too dramatic, but it's almost like liberalism robs the Catholic of his or her faith. Yeah. And, and to, yeah. just to kind of like to put the context a little bit, Larry, you probably remember the section where Thomas says that any article of faith yeah. that, that is accepted just because I happen to, let's say I happen to agree with this particular article of faith but I don't accept another article of faith because I don't personally agree with it or whatever. Then in fact, I've received no article of faith actually in faith because yeah. to, to receive it in faith is to, is to receive it on the basis of sort of God's knowledge of God's self. Right? Yeah, the, right? author, which, the which authority of the revealer. Muster up. I can't yeah. you know, come up with my own faith that's good enough to kind of know God as God knows you know, God's self. I mean, it's, it's, you really get into this weird thing where turning private, uh, you know, consent into the final arbiter of truth is the final undoing of Catholicism. Yeah. But in a way, that's all your, it's your only option in a liberal society is to think of yourself that way. It's, it's yeah. crazy. But are we, are we... And the, 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 the irony is, is because um, uh, the government says you're allowed to believe it, there's, there, there's the illusion that you, um, you, you know, you still have what you started with. But, you know, this is, it, it, yeah. In fact, it changes the nature of everything. It all looks the same in one way. You know, that's that that line from um, um, Stephen Wright. Uh, I don't know if you recall. I, I referred to it in the book. I, I, I mean, it's a great line, you know, that the comedian has with, uh, you know, always the one liners one after another. One yeah. of his lines was, you know, having come home to his apartment and found that uh, all of his furniture had been stolen and replaced with identical replicas. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, that's what lib liberalism is. It sort of 
things are taken from us and returned to us. And, <laughs> and I mean, in just really yeah. subtle ways, they've all been changed and you can't, yeah. you can't, and, and this goes all the way into our private life. I mean, that's the thing that's sort of ironic is that um, uh, it, it, it goes all the way. In fact, it goes into, into our very relationship, you know, between soul and body. Uh, it, it's, mm-hmm. it's extraordinary how insidious this is. Well, yeah, yeah. It, it instills in us. I mean, and we're, we're, and people aren't stupid. There's an instinctive awareness. And it yeah. goes back to what you were saying before, David, about how medieval people really had a resonance with things. Modern people don't have that same resonance because I think we have this instinctive awareness that there's something kind of fake about yeah. our existence. It's a simulacrum. It's right. a counterfeit. And, and it, it, it kind of leads, I, it's part of what I think Charles Taylor is trying to get at when he talks about the buffered self mm-hmm. and in, in a non-enchanted world and the buffered self that... The, you know, he doesn't mean quite the same thing that I mean by it right now, but that there is this barrier between ourselves, which leads us to become sort of psychologically, even epistemologically, a, a race of observers. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 you know, not participants, a race of passive observers. And, and you know, they're, they're, they're dramatic instances of that, um, you know, these, these things that you read about or even see where, you know, a rape is occurring and people are filming it um, on their yeah. phones or, <laughs> yeah. or yeah. yeah. And you just think, you know, what, what in the world is going on here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's the, that's the thing. It's, it's, um, you know, in the end, uh, Plato always turns out to have seen all these things uh, before the rest of us, you know I mean? I think this oh, is yeah. meant by the cave. Uh, that we 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 are we are sort of surrounded by um, you know, but it's it's kind of a radicalized cave because we um, we recognize that these things are fake and yet we don't see any way out of it. I mean, we we we, we, we right, right. By it. There's there was a uh, an interview with a philosopher I forget his name that mm-hmm. I just read about um, who's um, coming out with a book arguing that you know we need to um, stop being scared of uh, the bomb and learn to love it is, uh, was that Dr. Strangelove? You Dr. Know, Strangelove. You need to stop being scared of virtual reality and recognize that it's just as real as anything else. And, you know, right, to right. Me that means that he's trivialized. You see what I mean? You can't say that unless you've already assumed yeah, kind of yeah. a trivialized form of reality. And, you know, he's, he's, and so what, what's the, what's the, what's the outcome? You know, the, the depression uh, that afflicts our culture and the, 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 the extraordinary violence and the, oh, the, yeah. the, um, uh, just nihilism and addiction. Uh, it's addictions. Big. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, I, you know, it's got to be the case that there has never been a culture in the world. So riddled by addiction, uh, in, in history. I mean, I, you know, well, all the it's or depression. Perfect, I, I, it, it, yeah. It's yeah, a perfect, yeah, it's yeah. a perfect storm that has come together in the United States of, yeah. of wealth and material, uh, largesse that affords us every concupiscence, yeah. <laughs> every indulgence and, of our concupiscence and, and that we could ever, and, and the technological and so yeah. forth. And then we add to that the opioid drug business and all that. And you add to that the nihilism that Rodney said, the depression. And it just becomes a perfect storm for all kinds of addictions uh, that then further create us as simply a race of observers, passive Mm -hmm. observers that live now simply within the dopamine rush of of our our subjectivity. I mean, my wife knows one of the things that drives me nuts in this sort of just personal is, uh, you know, you go to events now, be it a graduation or Thanksgiving meal or whatever, and they've become photo ops. Yeah. Everybody drags out their smartphone. And I mean, I've been in situations where, you know, we're right in the middle of something fantastic, getting toasting somebody for that. And somebody says, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. And, you know, and, then, and then 27 iPhones <laughs> come out and, I just fly into a rage. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 of course, I'm prone to flying into yeah. rages. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and, and think about this. You know, people will justify um, technological devices because they, you know, they're just a, a kind of an improved means to achieve whatever end that you want. And so we say something like, you know, Facebook and so forth. 
is a means to allow us to um, communicate our lives. But you know what? What happens in subtle ways is just what you're saying there. I mean, think about it. We're starting to think of the experience as a means to post something on. So, so right, now right. The reality yeah. is becoming the instrument yes. uh, that serves yes. the, the 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 greater. That's my point of the Facebook yep. post, and that's just yes. that's weird. And, that, and that's yeah. how it's a little bit different from, for example, I know, and Rodney would know about this. There was sort of controversy back in the day when recordings first came out of music and you know the the live musicians were saying well that that's that's not a good thing yeah. music is meant to be experienced live in person by real people playing real instruments right there in the room with you and as soon as you go to vinyls and so forth something is is changing and yet yeah and that's that's all true but i think it's in a different category altogether than what you just described where we are now actually viewing reality itself as simply a medium for for creating virtual reality yeah. uh, you know and so I, I think there's a subtle difference there but still well, I mean, yeah there is and, and 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 it's worth reflecting on that further yeah i mean not not tonight. Yeah, i mean there are lots and lots of people have thought about this i'm thinking of neil postman's book mm -hmm. you know amusing ourselves to death where he talks about basically what did us in was the telegraph and then the radio. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Plato, Plato does it one better. The problem was writing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's the problem, right? You just keep peeling back the layer of the onions until we're just reduced to a series of of monosyllabic grunts. <laughs> you know, that, that's the one piece of technology that my students would be okay with me not allowing them to have as books. You know, like, no writing. books in this class. No, like, okay, books, no, no books, no writing. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> no writing. <laughs> but but it does need unpacking and it does need uh, yeah. a greater attentiveness to, to sort of what's going on because of our liberal culture, because of its denigration of the spiritual it's marginalization, not it's denigration, it's marginalization, which is even worse. Yeah. Uh, and and, and the, what it has done to our notions of the structure of reality. And it all goes back to my question. All right, so what's so bad about yeah. liberalism saying religion is just this utterly private thing on a level of choosing a Big Mac over a Whopper, you know? Yeah. Y you choose your Lutheran Whopper, and that guy over there has got his Buddhist fish sandwich. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and it's, who cares? Who cares? And what you're essentially saying is all religions are equal because they're all equally trivial. Right, right. You know, yeah. and... Yeah, and, and, and the thing is, you know, what goes if God goes, you know? Uh, everything. Yeah, yeah. So so that 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 point, it you know, and, and, and in fact, I mean, isn't this sort of how things have played uh, played this, themselves out? That the American founders would never have they they wouldn't have understood yeah. what you meant if you said something like um, we can't say we can't claim make a truth claim in the public sphere. <laughs> yeah, that 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 would have been insane. They just wanted to bracket out the, the the God question. But isn't that interesting? How we've gotten to the point where you can't actually make the, the idea that you would that your argument at in a court is that something is true, you know, yeah. uh, uh, that, that it just doesn't have a place. And I mean, isn't that extraordinary? How, how have we gotten to the point? And you, you just have to show there there actually is a logical connection here, which doesn't mean, you know, some people think that I am implying that um, there's this kind of um, faded necessity that things have to have to unfold in a certain way if we start with certain presuppositions. It's not that at all. It's the presuppositions open up a particular horizon that encourage some things and discourage others. But I mean, th there are an infinite number of ways that things can can uh, sure. Work yeah. out. It's but it, but but however they work themselves out, you'll see evidence of the origins in it. That's the key. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, um, we're sort of running. Uh, well, we've been on here about an hour and in 10 minutes or so um one of the things too that I, I i would like to address um to 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 both of you but uh, to, to especially to david um is the question of what's wrong with the traditionalists the modern sort of what we call the rad trap what's wrong with their vision of integralism yeah yeah I, you know it's funny i i had thought that you might lead with a question like that and now i've forgotten what i was going to say um, <laughs> no I, you were all prepared let me let me let me uh just two things and this isn't a complete answer but it's just the beginning of an answer 
answer. Um, you know, I try to spend some time in the book. And also there was an exchange between me and, and uh, Pater Edmund Waldstein in, Waldstein, in the yeah. of, of New Polity too, um, sort of along this line. Uh, I mean, two things. First of all, I, I um, one of the things that I appreciate about um, the uh, integralists is the recognition that um, the, the, the church represents an authority that makes a claim on the political sphere in a in in some respect, and I think that that's something that that's something that's hard for us to take because even even the um, the most uh, critical of us uh, with respect to liberalism feel uneasy <laughs> thinking about um, mm -hmm. uh, the church as a kind of an authority, even in, even in a certain sense of the political realm. But but I, I think even in the religious realm. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who am I to judge? <laughs> no, and, and I and I appreciate that. I think that they that they are recalling this traditional view uh, uh, in a way that few people are. My problem is, um, um, and and this this is something you guys are very familiar with. Um, you know, if you read if you read the handbook, um, uh, the the famous uh, handbook of 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 uh, integralism. I mean, you see it sort of spelled out. It's, it's more subtle. I think Pater uh, uh, Waldstein, I mean, the, there, there are many very intelligent, very subtle thinkers in, in, in that realm and, and also a spectrum. Um, but but uh, it's not long before you start seeing this kind of nature grace dualism that, that um, uh, you know, the layer cake sort of thing. To put yeah, it, yeah. That, you know, the political exactly. kind of ends here. And then because man has a higher end, we need the the church now to fill in the gap and to you know um, that's a that's a caricature but the, but it, it seems to me you 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 you, you see that and um, uh, w one of the implications of this um, is that uh, the the integralists are always going to talk about authority precisely because it's this imposition from the outside it's always going to have the flavor of coercive power. Right. And, and, it, and it's amazing how preoccupied uh, they are with coercive power. And you wonder why in the world do you make this the central, you know, wh why is it um, one of the main questions that they discuss is whether the church is, um, has the right to execute heretics, you know, that, that, <laughs> that that's really the, the burning question. And, and it, to me, that's just extraordinary. Now, I think with a much more subtle, view i mean uh, of of the relationship between nature and grace you recognize that there's a movement it's not just from parachuting in or imposed from above but there's a movement from below and yeah. the political expression of this it seems to me is a recognition that that political existence is already naturally religious in order to i mean in the middle ages they thought of political authority as sacramental or quasi sacramental and that 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 dominated uh medieval yeah, yeah. I, it, it's a, you know it took a long time to distinguish um the anointing of the king from uh the anointing of uh of bishops um eventually that distinction was made but but you know the uh it's, the fact that it took a, a time to, to well in other words it shows uh, i don't mean to yeah. interrupt but it, maybe the distinction is that in the medieval world, government was still considered sacral rather than yeah. denom denominational. There you go. Well, see, and that's the thing. It was sacral. Why? Because the, the, the king represented human existence in its fullest sense. Right. And, and, and human existence was, and man was the microcosm. So to say that, that, that uh, political authority was sacral, sacral, meant that reality was Ha, 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 was you know sacramental yeah. that that, yeah. that, re, that yeah. you know, the, the point that you made about the imminence of God that in fact right. reality itself is is intrinsically related to to God and expressive of God and you know that that side of things I think tends the 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 integralists want to kind of um, compensate for uh, natural secularism in a way by by um, imposing. Uh, in a more kind of um, forceful way, you know, uh, religious practice. Uh, well, that's my point. That the, the, the modern integralists would not, in any way, shape, or form, want to resacralize government. Yeah. In the way we that we saw in the medieval world, they would rather have government simply be 
denominational that it has a preference yeah it, yeah. it has it has a stated preference for Very. which which religious denomination it's going to throw its weight behind yeah um and that's a very different thing. I mean, that's already conceding the. the well, yeah, that's my point. It's already kind of still playing in the liberal sandbox of power, uh, yeah. and its and its notions of power. That's um, right. That's right. Uh, and I just I, I'm with you. I mean, I just can't, frankly, I mean, I, I can't imagine myself living in, in under any regime that would be concocted in the mind of Adri Adrian Vermeule. Uh, you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to live in his America. That, that's yeah, for sure. I, I haven't met him, and he has said some things that I find really uh, true and strikingly true, but he's also said, said a number of things that have well, made That's my problem. Yeah. I would read along and go, you go, you go, Adrian. I, well, this is fantastic. Oh, my yeah. God. Where have you been all my – whoa, wait a minute. Yeah. Well, you, you just said what? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. What yeah. you mean? Just, what you talk just, about, Willis? No, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's no. that's you know this this idea of 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 executing heretics. I mean, the the, the preoccupation you see trace it. But you know, when he when he says we need to reconceive political powers related to the common good, I mean, how can you complain with that? I mean, that yeah. Uh, the, the the trouble that I have with a lot of this, though, a lot of the integralism is that it's fantasy land. Yeah. Um. Yeah. You know the, the the fact of the matter is we are so, we are so far away from the realization, say, of a Catholic confessional state yeah. anywhere in in the modern Western world that it's it's almost not yeah it's a conversation worth having I suppose on a purely metaphysical theoretical philosophical level, but it has no no purchase on sure. on on what's going on in reality. So my point would be, we have to come to. We, we can't simply reject liberalism to court in a scorched earth way that says we're just now going to replace it with an integralism of this sort. It seems to me that even if there's something foundationally wrong at the very basis of the liberal project, that the, that the liberal project still has valor, valorized uh, freedom yeah. in, in a way that has to be embraced yeah. by us, not yeah. in the way they construct it, right. but in the fact that they raise the question. Yeah. Uh, and and this is something that I think is an irreversible movement of yeah. history, yeah. that we, that we have to construct our own now political. And I think this is what Dignitatis Humanae was trying to do, yeah. in its own sort of. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, Speyman once talks about uh, once talked about um, the key uh, to uh, dealing with modernity is to interpret modernity against itself. Exactly. You know, and so if modernity uh, uh, defines itself as breaking from the tradition, um, what you need to do is reinterpret the very things that it's affirming in relation to the uh, traditional right. roots, you know, and, and, yeah, and yeah. a further dimension of that, you know, uh, you know, that you've heard me use the word tradition a lot uh, in this discussion. It's, it's becoming increasingly a, 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 a category for me. Um, and I, and I, you know, and it's something I think needs to, needs to be thought through some more, but you know, it, it is the case, you know, the, here's the irony that the traditionalists, um, want to recover something that's gone. And so in, in, in a curious sort of way, they are trying to recover tradition in a non-traditional form. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and, and yeah. The, 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 the curious thing is, uh, in, in a, in an odd way, those who are liberals, because this is our tradition are embracing modern ideas in a traditional form. So the traditionalists <laughs> yeah. are embracing yeah. sort of yeah. traditional ideas in a modern form. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the moderns are embracing a modern ideas in a traditional form. And, and yeah. the, the key is, what, what we need to do is, you know, you can't just sort of invent a new new political order. I mean, and these are all invented on the on the Internet. I mean, they're all they're all through. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah. Think, of, think of the irony of saying I've developed an ersatz traditionalism. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and to do it on, on by by. Yeah. Um, Twitter, you know, social media. <laughs> I, yeah. I, yeah. I call it the the alliance of the phone and altar. Oh, that's, that's kind of what integralism is. It's, it's oh, I'm, I'm writing that down. Okay, 
you know, it's this, it's, it's this the odd, union of phone and, and altar. Yeah. The, the alliance <laughs> of phone and all. Yeah. So, and and the, the thing is, <laughs> what, what we have to do is we, we do have to accept what we're given. And that is the, the, the American tradition. Um, but that doesn't mean that we accept it on its own terms. And this is where I think straight, right, right. You know, we can yeah. accept it in a way that sees the deeper origins of the ideas that it embraces and tries to reconnect and regraft. I mean, that that's kind of the way I, I well, I, yeah. I mean, for example, you get these traditionalists that reject Dignitatis Humanae because it endorses religious freedom. And as it's, you it's, see there, you, you now have accommodated yourself to modern liberalism and its regime of religious freedom. And the, the answer is to deny religious freedom. OK, yeah, yeah. And, and and no, the answer is not to deny religious freedom. The, 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 the answer is to develop a more robust sense of religious freedom than the liberals have right. to actually show that their version of it is, <laughs> is stupid and silly. And yeah. ours is the right one. Yeah, okay? it is not really free and not really religious. So, it's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. That's and, the uh, problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. OK, how's there? I've, I've, I've been talking too much or you, you want to get we're we're going to shut this down here pretty soon it's we've been going about an hour and a half last words no that's i i've really enjoyed this this is great yeah. and i and i'm glad this uh i'm glad this sort of conversation is no longer in such a small little you know conclave of people because yeah. i remember you know again when i was reading your father david in the middle of the 90s yeah. nobody thought that i mean I, I, people nope. thought i was a raving lunatic oh i, I know that, but, i mean they still think I'm <laughs> that's what i was gonna say yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> for other reasons but but uh but now it's kind of refreshing to to see you know like i mean patrick Deneen's book was extremely mm -hmm. you know sold well and was read by lots of you know you know barack obama that yeah yeah and, I obama mean, so read it amazing that he could even raise the question yeah. of yeah. liberalism to court and and uh and, and it is refreshing to see that yeah. you know that's happening. So this is this is this is exciting. Yeah, very good. Well, yeah. Can, I, can I put a little plug in? I'm actually finishing up another little a little manuscript. Um, sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, boy. Called God in the City. Um, uh, an essay in political metaphysics. And it's just thinking through how oh. political life necessarily and of its very nature implicates God, you know, the God question. Um, wow, that sounds so fantastic. And uh, when is it coming out? Who's publishing? Well, uh, this is uh, this is uh, I'm 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 going to give a lecture at the University of Dallas. Their their Aquinas lecture, and they they uh, request that those be developed into little books. And so um, I've got I've got that mostly. I have to get the footnotes together, but the the manuscript is mostly. oh yeah. It's, it's kind of a further step along this line. Kind of like the the lecture that Ken Schmitz gave. I think it was a Marquette. Yeah, it's like the ago. Marquette. I mean, yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. must know about those. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and I love those kind of books. Yeah, me too. Yeah, man. yeah, that's great. Well, I, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, and thanks, everyone, for uh, watching and or listening, depending on how you're doing this. I can't thank David Schindler enough for showing up and discussing this well, great book. Thank you. It's you know it's really good to see uh, the two of you guys together. We don't get you in the same room as often. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, uh, well, yeah, we haven't had any communio conferences down in Washington lately. It seems yeah. like because of COVID. COVID, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stupid COVID. I hate COVID. <laughs> hey, Here, have, here's have, here's the deal. You guys throw a conference as soon as you can, and I'll and I'll drag this guy with me. And we'll there you go. There you go. <laughs> Drag is the word, but I'll be there. Absolutely. All right. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop. We can hang out a little bit here, guys. But I'm gonna stop the recording now. So uh there we go. Stop.